All right, that that intro, yes, that intro, no, it sure is. Uh, welcome to a special episode of Demos with Dave. This episode is brought to you by Dave. I'm just kidding. Um, so we have a, a new app now for Android and iOS, and it is for our Wi-Fi camera cars. These are cars that we started coming out with quite a number of years ago, I think around 2018 or so. Uh, the first one was a Wi-Fi camera car uh, theater car in our 21-inch series cars, passenger cars. And we've <clears throat> done a number of other ones since, um, including VistaVision dome cars and Cupola Cam cabooses. And I do have a couple of those Cupola Cam cabooses here with me today to use in the demonstration of the new app. Um, so let's dive into that. Now, in this video, I'm going to be using an Android device um, for the new app. Um, and most everything uh, for the iOS version of the new app applies as well. If there are differences, I will let you know what they are um, as we go over them. So first thing I'm going to do is one of the cars is basically factory reset, factory fresh. Um, and if you want to know how to do that, just see the manual for the camera car, uh, you know, the manual that came with the product when you purchased it and opened it. And that will have the reset procedure in there if you need to do the factory reset. Um, but when the cars come out of the box, they will be broadcasting their own Wi-Fi network. Um, they will not already be part of another Wi-Fi network. Um, instead, they will act as an access point. And so here on my Wi-Fi settings screen on my Android device, you can see that I'm currently connected to TP-Link, which is my wireless router that I have here in my office. Um, and two down, you can see one that starts with CM9. That one is what the camera car is going to look like out of the box. So that is my in, uh, unique Wi-Fi address for this camera car. Everyone's going to be different, but it's going to have this same really long name with letters and numbers, um, at least the same format. Um, so we're going to go ahead and connect to that on my um, Android device. Um, that obviously disconnects you from your network that you are on. So now that I'm connected to the caboose directly with Wi-Fi, I do not have internet access on my uh, device, right? And so that's why you want to join your Wi-Fi camera to your network so that you still have Wi-Fi access on your device when you want it. Now, um, now that we're connected to the camera car, what we're going to do, um, you know, now I already have the app installed, but you're going to go to, for instance, uh, this is the Play Store, <coughs> for the Google Play Store. And what I did was I just typed in Lionel LLC, and you'll see that, you know, a few different apps popped up here with the Lionel wireless camera there on the bottom. Um, now, I've already installed it, but when you, um, now obviously it's not going to load because, again, I don't have internet. I've already installed it. When you see here, you'll get the option to install it, and uh, once you do, then... What you can do is go over to your settings and find the app. And right there, it's going to be called Lionel Wireless Camera. We're going to tap that icon. And here we go. This is where we get the app. Now, this is the landing page or the home page of the new app, kind of themed in orange and blue for Lionel colors. Um, you can see that I have a Southern Pacific caboose already saved here. Um, it's grayed out because that means it does not see that Southern Pacific caboose um, at the moment. And that is because that caboose is connected to my network and we are currently connected to the other caboose. Um, so since we do not have the new caboose yet saved to the app, what we're going to do is tap on find cars. And here you go, IP camera. This is what it will say by default um, when the car is factory fresh. And the ID under where it says IP camera, that's going to be the same ID that we saw in the Wi-Fi settings menu when we connected to the car. So if we tap on this, it's going to load the camera feed. And there we go. Now, this car still has some film over the lens. Um, so that's why it looks a little blurry. 
But here is where you can um, name your car. So you can change the name here if you tap on it. You know, you can change the name to whatever you want. Um, and then you can also, this is the screen that you would use to add your car to your um, local network. So what you would do is where it says SSID, you want to tap on that and you're going to get a list of all of the Wi-Fi networks that your smart device currently sees, right? And you can scroll down through them all. And if I wanted to add it to my TP-Link router, I would do so. And then this is where you would um, enter in the password. Now, let me just do that real quick. For the sake of demonstration. And after you're done typing in the password, hit OK. And then we're going to go back to the home screen. All right. And, and once you're back to the home screen, you're going to notice that the car is not there, right? And that is because we've now added your Wi-Fi network to that car, um, and that car switched over to the Wi-Fi network, the TP-Link router that I was using. So what we have to do is go back to our Wi-Fi screen and connect back to our local network, or the TP-Link router. And then when we go back into the app, you'll see now I am connected, or the app can see the SP Caboose. That's because it is on the TP-Link network. Um, now we have to find the car, click on Find Cars again, and that's where you're going to see the um, second Caboose that we just added. So if I tap on that, right, and now, um, you know, I hadn't changed the name, but I, we changed the network. So you see where it says TP-Link-F12E, added a network. Under that, you want to click on Add to Favorites. And so it adds it to your favorites, your home screen. And um, it's going to be gray for a moment as it configures its connection. And now it's uh, orange um, now that it is connected to it. So we're going to tap on that guy. And you can see um, after a few seconds, it loads the video screen footage. There we go. So that's how easy it is to join your camera car to your local Wi-Fi network. Now I want to show you some other things in the app. Um, since we're here, so if we, I'm going to use the Southern Pacific Caboose since it doesn't have the clear film on it, it kind of distorts the view. Yeah, so you can see the other Caboose here with the red light. That's the one we just added to the stream. Um, and now this Caboose here is the Southern Pacific Caboose. And so you can see the um, stream there. Um, it's pretty quick. Now I'm recording video at the same time, so there might be some lag, but uh, it's actually a pretty impressive connection. Um, now, the new app, I have it already set to be able to rotate. So, you know, it's, it's obviously small when you're in portrait mode. Um, so you want to go to landscape mode. All you got to do is rotate your device, and the app will follow along with it and rotate the display as well. Now, well, what do you do with the video screen or the video feed? So tap on the screen, and then you're going to see some options pop up. Now, these are different setting options that you have for the camera. You can adjust the brightness of the feed. So, you know, if I want to make it a little brighter, or if I want to dim it down because I think it's too bright, um, you know, you're just going to set that to whatever level you want. And, and the same goes with the contrast. You can turn up the contrast, turn it down, whatever, wherever you want it. And, uh, you know, when you tap off the screen, the changes will take effect. And we tap back on the screen again, um, and you can also change, uh, you know, the, the resolution. You know, play around with, with what you like and what fits best on your device. You know, you can do fit or fill. Um, if we fill it, it kind of stretches the camera feed up, but it fills the whole screen. Fit is kind of the standard resolution. Another thing you can do on the left, bottom left there, you can see where you can mirror the uh, camera feed footage if you want to. Um, all up to you whether you want to or not. And then the icon in the center there, that is for taking a photograph. And that will just save it right to your Android's gallery. Um, and the same applies to iOS devices. It'll just save it to a local folder. And you can also record video. 
So you tap on that. So now it is now recording the video feed. Um, and it's going to continue recording even if you tap off. You see up here in the top right, the little red circle indicates that you are still recording video. Tap back on again, and you can just tap that, and it'll stop recording. And now that recording is saved to your device as well. Um, what you want to do is once that video is saved, say you want to share it or send it to yourself or whatnot. So we're going to rotate the screen back around and go back to the home screen. Now here's where you can see recordings. So under the uh, the second blue box there um, shows recordings. It gives you a, a timestamp uh, and which device it was recorded with. And so if you tap on that, this is the recording. Um, obviously, it's not a lot of fun to just watch me with my hand going up and down. But on your layout, if you're, you're traveling, you see different scenery, tunnels, bridges, etc. And you can also even share that um, video. So in the top right, you see that arrow kind of pointing up. If you click on that, it's going to give you some various options to, to share that video, whether it's through email or messenger, um, you know, all these various options that are kind of standard with Android. And you'll also get the same ability to do so on iOS. It's going to look a little different on an iOS device, but it's going to be the same basic functionality and saving it as an MP4 and being able to email it to yourself or, or anyone you want to, texting a link to download it as well. So that's a neat way to share the video that you save. All right, so once we're back on the home screen, I just want to show you a couple more things. Um, down at the bottom, we have a settings box under the blue settings square. Um, and in here, there are a lot of different options. Um, just about just tells you about the camera and some of the libraries that we use. Um, you can change the colors, whether you want to use the bright Lionel orange or just have a more subdued gray version if you want. This is also where you can change your default resolution of the cam camera streaming. And the last thing we have in place down there under logging, this is for Lionel use. Um, so if you ever run across an issue where your app is not running correctly or your caboose is not running correctly on the device, um, you can enable logging and send the files to us here at Lionel and we can help solve the issue. So it's just kind of a built-in <clears throat> debugger for us to help customers that run into issues. Um, so don't worry about that right now. But yeah, so that is the basic overlay of our new Lionel wireless camera app for our various camera cars, which once again included the theater cars, the VistaVision dome cars, and the Kupla cam cars that we have come out with over the past five or so years. And um, none of the functionality has changed if you use a desktop, so you can still just type in the IP address of the car and get it popped up that way as well. But uh, the new app will allow you to continue streaming and then kind of give you some more ease of use over the previous version of the app. So happy railroading and thank you for watching.